Thank you. Prime Minister Maloney, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a pleasure to be here with you today, and I thank the leadership of Prime Minister Maloney and the Government of Italy for hosting this summit in this august house of the people. I believe that two things unite each of us here today. A conviction that my continent, Africa, holds near boundless potential, and we've heard that from all speakers today. But we also see today that the geopolitical landscape is fast changing, and that will require a different way of working towards the commitment to seeing that the potential of Africa is realized. And some of this we have seen as demonstrated in the proposed Mate plan. Yet the global reality is that we are falling behind. The commitments that we have made over the last decades have been exacerbated by the lack of ability to come back from different crises, climate, COVID, Ukraine, and more recently, our moral crisis in Israel and Gaza. At the halfway point of the 2030 agenda, progress is on the Sustainable Development Goals is falling woefully short. Only 15% of the targets are on track to be met by 2030, and by any standard, that is a fail. With our dynamic and booming youth population, our wealth of critical minerals, and the vast renewable energy prospects in Africa, Africa could become a clean energy powerhouse and a digital service center and the next great manufacturing hub of the world. But realizing this immense potential relies on sustainable development, from building resilient, modern infrastructure, including energy, the food systems, health systems, and investing in education and skills for young people. And here we welcome the African Union making the 2024 its year of education. But the lack of finance and long-term investments is the critical constraint to current progress as we deal equally with trying to recover and invest in peace. The SDG finance gap is immense and it is growing. And sadly, many of our wealthy countries' promises of finance for development and climate action remain unfulfilled, eroding a trust and exacerbating the root causes of the continent such that we cannot get ahead of the challenges that face us. Excellencies, the, for, the forward way is, of course, and always has been clear. And at last year's SDG summit, we were pleased to see global leaders agree to get the goals back on track. That includes endorsing the SDG's proposal for an SDG stimulus of 500 billion a year, which all of us must try to get behind. But it also includes a commitment to focus global efforts on driving progress in critical areas, each of which can spur broader development gains and drive progress across all goals. This approach mirrors the African Union's new 10-year plan for Agenda 2063, as well as the efforts to create an African continental free trade area. The Italian government's focus at this summit on supporting key pillars from digitalization to energy and food systems complements this approach. It stands to benefit Italy as well as African countries and their people. And we welcome the focus on genuine equal partnerships, which should be at the core of all development cooperation, as articulated by my brother, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki. What does this mean in practice? It means working with Africa's leading financial institutions, such as the African Development Bank, and the and Afriexim Bank to build on and scale up the strong pipeline of projects that they have begun and to deliver them urgently to the people. It also means working constructively with the African Union Commission and Agenda 60, 60, 2063. It means committing to long-term engagement, rejecting our short-term approaches and building solid foundations for long-term development and sustainability the model that African countries have advocated for at least the past decade since the adoption of the 2063 Agenda. But crucially, it also means bold, substantial, and long-term investments as required to accelerate progress in critical areas, such as have been reflected in the European Union's Global Gateway. I urge the Government of Italy to make such transformative and effective and equal partnerships a reality and to use its presidency of the G7 to work with other countries to do likewise. 
the UN family will avail its expertise in countries across Africa and at the global level, as with the Rome-based agencies that you so kindly host here in Rome. Excellency's accelerating sustainable development across Africa relies on a surge in private investment. The international financial institutions play a critical role in making that a reality, as does the private sector. Here, the international financial institutions can help to leverage and to help us de-risk for African countries. And here, African countries play a strong role in working with the World Bank and its new vision for people, prosperity, and a livable planet, but also with the IMF to further the opportunity of the Resilience and Sustainability Trust and the Poverty Reduction and Growth Trust. It also means pursuing peace and stability. And we welcome the African Union's ambition to silence the guns as part of the 2063 Agenda. It does also mean creating policies and regulations needed to attract companies underpinned by strong, well-run public institutions. And it means increasing domestic resources through effective and transparent means in both partnerships on which the private investment can and build. Excellencies to support sustainable development across Africa and beyond, our international systems need a refresh so that they are fit for the 21st century and the numerous crises that we, face, we see ourselves facing every year. Our international financial institutions largely reflect the world in which they were created almost 80 years ago. African countries are not represented appropriately, and the institutions are largely insufficiently responsive to their needs. And it is now time to make that change. We need new frameworks to address these technologies, and to help release the potential so that we can accelerate towards the ambitions and the vision of Agenda 2063. On all these fronts, this year presents a critical opportunity for change, and the UN Summit of the Future in September can be that change. We're urging African countries to work together for an outcome that delivers the change that we need with that collective voice. We also urge Italy to join hands and support these efforts, using again its G7 leadership its membership of the G20, to bring other nations on board. Together, we believe that working in genuine and equal partnerships, we can realize the immense potential of Africa for the benefit of everyone. That shared ambition is what unites us here today, and we wish you every success with this important gathering. Thank you.